Good morning everyone and welcome to our time of liturgy here at St Wilfrid's. It's the last day of term and here I am all by myself in the activity space. It's an unusual feeling. I'm not really all by myself because I do have Mr Smith behind the cameras with me. Um, and with the awesomeness of Mr Smith and the wonders of technology, we will be able to unite together in a time of prayer, reflection, in a time of liturgy, as we do at the end of every term. Um, so it will be different, but it's really important that we enter this time with the same reverence that we would any of our liturgies. So if you've got a to-do list in front of you and you thought maybe while watching the, the liturgy you could also get your last minute Christmas cards done or what have you, or if your phone's still switched on, anything else at all. It's just time to put that to one side and be aware that we're all united together, whether you're watching this in your tutor room, in a classroom, in an office or at home, we're going to unite together now in our time of prayer. And though it's different, you don't need me to tell you what a difference this year is. To say that 2020 has been a bit of a mess is an understatement. And even though it's the last day of term, we're still asking ourselves that question, what will Christmas look like this year? What will it really feel like? Will Santa be wearing a face mask? Will he be delivering the, the presents in an Amazon delivery style, leaving them on the doorstep? Or will he be able to leave them under the tree? And what about the reindeers? Will they be socially distancing from one another? I joke. That's not to make light of a tough year that a lot of us have had. And no doubt for some of you, Christmas will be messed with bells on. As we prepare ourselves for this liturgy and give ourselves permission to relax into it, let's just be honest with our feelings and bring our whole self to the liturgy this morning. Maybe you are shielding from sadness. Maybe you're feeling quite upset about the racial collisions that this year has brought. Or maybe there'll be somebody missing from your Christmas dinner table this year. I hope this liturgy helps you, and I hope it helps you to remember, to reflect, and to pray on the true meaning of Christmas. Because even in the mess that 2020 has brought us, we have a message of hope. Because some 2,000 years ago, a baby was born in the mess. And yes, that first Christmas was a really messy one too. Jesus was born in the mess for our mess. God came down to the front line and he put in a perfect shift that would make us whole. He offers us a vaccine. And if we accept it, it means that we never have to socially distance from God. This is at the very heart of our liturgy today, our Christmas liturgy, and I hope it helps. So let's just still ourselves now and, rem and begin by remembering that everything we do is in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, Father of all, the darkness that cover the earth is giving way to the bright dawn of your word made flesh. Make us a people of this light. As we hear the Christmas story unfold today, make us faithful to your word, that we may bring your life to our messy world. Grant this through Christ our Lord.
prophet Isaiah understood the mess of the world and the power of God to clean up the mess and to make things sparkle. Here's how the prophet Isaiah described it. The people that walked in darkness have seen a greater light. On those who live in the land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as people rejoice at harvest time. For there is a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid upon his shoulders. And this is the name they give him. Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. We see this theme of light and dark running throughout the Old Testament. This longing for light, something to illuminate us and help us clear up the mess. Mess, just four letters jumbled into a word, but in order there are four loaded letters that bring to mind messy words like pain, regret, feeling broken, angry, numb. The Bible talks about mess as sin, and here is the good news. Mary, who was born sinless, said yes to the mess. Yes to carrying the hero that would clean up the mess. The yes is most beautifully captured in the Magnificat Mary's response.
Now we turn to today's gospel, which tells us how Jesus came to be born. The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how Jesus came to be born. His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a man of honor and wanting to spare her publicity, decided to divorce her informally. He had made up his mind to do this when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because she's conceived was in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus, because he is the one who is to save his people from their sins. Now, all this took place to fulfill the words spoken by the prophet through the, by the Lord through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. Allah Natarademo. Uzuzishtakonoshk. Diavas irasatavam. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had told him to do. He took his wife to his home. The Gospel of the Lord. The scripture we have just listened to together focuses on Joseph's premonition along with the image of angels. The whole theme of this liturgy, Christmas, has inspired both the choice of song and the dance for this next piece. Enjoy. In this next piece, you will hear three interwoven monologues tell the Christmas story from different points of view. The drama is based on Luke 2, verses 8 to 20, and Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12, and aims to bring out the contemporary themes of economic uncertainty, difficult relationships, celebrity culture, and the search for meaning in life. Hi. 
I was there, you know. Oh, yeah, me. What about me? Well, I didn't ask. To be honest, I wasn't in the best of moods that night. No, you were very lucky. I don't know. I don't know. It's funny to find me. Yeah. Well, times are tough. Economic uncertainty, I think the phrase is. And I knew that, as a self-employed shepherd, struggling to even make ends meet, the outlook was as bleak as the weather. According to the papers, we had it all. We were young, rich, and members of the royal family. Celebrity kids with the world at our feet from the day we were born. But something was missing. It, it just wasn't right. But we didn't know what it was. Now I know you wouldn't think it to look at me now, but I played my part that night. In fact, I had the starring role. I was one of the main choreographers in the greatest opening ceremony that the world has ever seen. Imagine having that on your CV. And it wasn't just the money, or lack of it, that was bringing me down. My wife had recently left me, and my youngest were just caught stealing. I felt like I had everything on my shoulder. We had a string of boyfriends, each more glamorous than the last. <laughs> well, that's being generous. <laughs> but still, that happy ever after feeling was eluding each one of us, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we each tried to find ourselves in various different ways. You name it, we tried it. But we just ended up feeling more lost. We spent an eternity rehearsing, getting everything just right. I thought the audience would be a whole host of the brightest and the best, but they turned out to be much more down to earth than that. I'd been passing some time with the other shepherds, huddled around the campfire to keep warm, obviously. They were having some stupid argument about who had the biggest flock, but I had other things on my mind. I ended up throwing myself in astronomy, searching the night sky for the answers to all our questions. We love stargazing, and together we came to know every inch of the heavens above us. And do you know the best bit? The, the element of surprise. surprise. There we were, silently waiting in the wings. And they didn't have a clue. Suddenly, the sky, which had been as black as my mood, turned into the most brightest, brilliant light. It was golden and, and warm, like the best feeling in the world. The others were just terrified. But I had a sense that, finally, things were looking up. And that's when we saw the new star, where no star had been before. You couldn't miss it. It lit up the entire sky. And I knew, without a doubt, that this is what I've been waiting for. We were all champing at the bit to start the show, but first there was a message we had to deliver. Out the light came a figure. A figure like a person. Only not a person. You know what I mean. Breathing is what she was. Right, lads? Yeah. Even the sheep were surprised. She spoke to us, told us a baby had been born in town and we were to go see him. But why did we decide to follow the star? I don't know exactly, but when it started moving we just knew it was leading us somewhere and we needed to follow it. And that was our cue. Ta-da! Out we came, the grand finale. It was the best fun. Flying and floating, swooping and swishing, gliding and singing. And the harmonies were out of this world, if I do say so myself. Well, maybe a bit off-key. Maybe one. A bit. Now, I know I'm already sounding like I had a little bit too much to drink around the campfire. A little bit? Yes, a little bit. But there were people up there in the sky, flying above our heads. Thousands of them, I think it was. Singing their hearts out. Proof, as if we really needed it, that this message about a baby really meant something. We were on the road for a long time. The star always just ahead of us. We never quite knew it was around the corner, but we were confident we would reach our destination. It was a shame when we had to stop. I could have gone on all night. But in reality, we were just a warm up act. The headliner was the one they really needed to see. So suddenly they were gone, and there we were in the dark and silence, a bunch of confused and traumatised middle aged shepherds. There was nothing for it but to go to town and find this baby. Right, lads? The others were convinced that if we didn't go, the glorious chorus would be back for round two. It's funny when you reach the end of a long journey. I thought I might be disappointed after investing so much hope in where the star would lead us. But as I stood there, outside of where the baby was, I've thought I've come all this way. I might as well stick my head around the door to say to the little one, Welcome to our world. Our crazy, confused and messed up world. But as soon as I saw him, I felt him say, I know, that's why I'm here. And he's been here all along.
We pray for those living with loss, and in particular those who will be experiencing Christmas without a loved one. We remember especially all those who work for and use the services of our Dominic House charity, the Mark Lay Foundation. Lord Jesus, bring us your peace. We pray for those facing homelessness and hunger this Christmas. We remember especially all those who work for and use the services of our Augustine House charity, Crawley Open House. Lord Jesus, feed the hungry. We pray for those who face illness and uncertainty in their lives. We remember especially all those who work for and use the services of our Catherine and St Francis House charities, St Catherine's Hospice and Chestnut Tree House. Lord Jesus, shine a light in the darkness. We pray for those facing extra struggles, challenges and hardship. We remember especially all those who work for and use the services of our Benedict House charity, Friends of Embark. Lord Jesus, protect the vulnerable. Lord Jesus, you cared so much for us that you stepped down from heaven and literally entered our messy world. 
We thank you for offering to shoulder our mess and forgive us for when we've caused mess to others. Thank you, Jesus, for being the greatest gift and thank you for offering yourself freely. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I hope that this time of prayer and reflection has been useful for you and it's created a bit of time to reflect on the Christmas story. Remember that this year's theme, which weaves its way throughout the liturgy, is Christmas. Well, it doesn't stop there because as a response to the liturgy, um, your tutor group are going to have a particular craft activity or task. So we probably will make a bit of mess in this activity today. You're going to be given some sheets of creative, colourful cards um, and you are going to turn it into strips that look like this. On the strips you will be able to write your prayers or your hopes for Christmas and the year ahead and then you're going to join them all together in a beautiful prayer paper chain. Hopefully your tutor group will make enough paper chains that you'll be able to link from your base, your tutor base, in the corridor to, along to the next tutor base and eventually we'll all physically be united in prayer by linking our chains, our prayer chains up to one another and what we'll be doing is we will literally be surrounding our whole school community in all our prayers and in all our hopes for um, the coming year ahead and for Christmas itself. Because remember that from the mess is born a message and there is none that is higher because what follows the mess is I-A-H Messiah. <laughs>